I'd love to hear your comments about chess clocks. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't think they're a good thing. And I'm going to say it, I think those people are wrong. And now, a little bit at the end that I'm putting at the beginning, because I really do want everybody's help with this. Timings. Can you please download a chess clock app? and see if it works for you. More importantly, can you time your matches? I'm genuinely curious to know how long people take when they are playing with a chess clock, specifically, as opposed to a general looming threat of 90 minutes or 75 or 60. How long do you actually take when on a chess clock, when truly playing as you would in a tournament, at your best, making fast decisions, I played a game just earlier today with a chess clock. I thought, 125 points, let's keep it easy, let's do an hour and a half. Me and my opponent finished in 50 minutes, 5-0. We did not need an hour and a half. We would not have played that fast if we hadn't been using a chess clock. So I'm really curious. When you guys are playing to the best of your abilities with a chess clock, could you please let me know below, in the comments below, what points level you were playing at, if applicable, what tournament pack you were playing, so you know, Core Book, Elite Book, um, Annihilation, SoCal, LVO, Slaughter Zone, LGT, if I've released that, I don't know, and then uh, how long it actually took, because you're going to have a chess clock running. You're, you're going to be able to tell me it took exactly this long, and the, the player with the 20-man list took X longer than me, who had a Grey Knights and five models. I would genuinely be curious, as it will seriously help not only me, but everybody else that is running a tournament to actually schedule their, their days. Anyway, that would be really cool if you could do that for me. As I said, leave a comment below. That would be really, really helpful for me. And, you know, if you like what I'm doing here, I do have a Patreon. It's a thing. If you want to talk more Kill Team, check out my Discord. It is also a thing. Anyway, on with the rest of the video where I probably give some advice on how and why to use a chess clock. Let's think of you on the top tables of the LGT. I'll see you there, lads. I'll see you there. Top tables of the LGT. You know, 100 players all playing Kill Team. And of course you're playing to win and so is your opponent because you're on the top damn tables. What do you do? Well, that's pretty simple. You slow play. Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here. And today, as you can probably tell from the camera angle and the fact I have a board with me, uh, I want to do something a little bit different. Now, my initial intention was to start this video off with a, oh, there are lots of accessories you can have for the game and effectively flex on all y'all, uh, and then finish up with, but hey, which is the most important? Uh, and then point to the thing that hypothetically nobody noticed, which is the chess clock. But of course, I've probably titled this something like, you know, Kill Team, how to use a chess clock. Whatever. Let's just get straight into it. Guys, we need to use chess clocks. Some of us need to use chess clocks. Let me rephrase that. And I want to tell you not only why, but what you can do, how to do it. There you go. I don't know why I didn't say and there. Let's keep going. I'm going to show you how to use a chess clock. I'm going to tell you why to use a chess clock. Let's do it. First things first, this is a chess clock. There are many like... This is my phone. But this is a chess clock app. There are many very, very similar. I don't know what this one's called. I think it's called chess clock app. Uh, it's, it's an Android phone. If you're using uh, iPhones, they probably have different names. Allow me to show you how easy this is to use. Uh, what have we got? Okay, so we got there. Now it's the other player's turn. Oh, would you like to roll that initiative, sir? Oh, good roll. Oh, equally good, sir. Obviously, whenever you play Kill Team, you must talk in this voice. Otherwise, is it really Kill Team? It's pretty simple, guys. But let's talk why you should use a chess clock and then we go into how. Firstly, why should you learn how to use a chess clock? Basically, for a game to... Ooh, I've gone way out of field, left field here. Can you tell this isn't scripted? Basically, when a game is trying to survive, 
you need several components. Firstly, the core gameplay loop of the game must be good. Kill Team satisfies that pretty decently if it's your kind of game. Secondly, there needs to be a community of people that are uh, engaging with people that do not wish to be community leaders, you know, followers, if you will, and are then pushing for new things to happen. Typically, this is going to come from the competitive crowd because they want new changes all the time. They want to see a lot of things that you don't get if you focus on a more narrative type game. So, we need to learn how to play in a competitive sense. If you ever want to attend a big gathering of Kill Team players, which a lot of us do, it's going to be a tournament. Now I'm going to do a whole series of how to play in a Kill Team tournament. But for now, we're going to cover chess clocks. If you somehow make it to the top tables of a tournament, it's quite possible that they are going to insist that you use a chess clock. This bad boy right here. Now. Why is that important? When I went to SoCal Open, they insisted that a chess clock was used on the top table, I believe in uh, day two. And a lot of the players that ended up on the top table were good players. They knew the game very well. They had never used a chess clock before, or at the very least they had never used a chess clock in Kill Team. But let's assume they had never used one before. Some really good players got thoroughly flustered. I'm just going to say it, they lost their composure because of this little countdown here and the time. I suddenly realised, oh yeah, okay, I get it. The reason I'm making this video is because I really enjoyed playing with the chess clock. In fact, I actually think that once you know the basics of Kill Team, once you know your faction, the tournament pack that you are playing in, etc, etc, a chess clock should be the default way to play Kill Team. Now, what you're going to set it at is a little bit up for debate, and that's something I'm going to throw back to you guys in a second. I played 125 points in the Slaughter Zone pack, first time playing Slaughter Zone, and I did uh, an hour and a half. Me and my opponent went a little bit nuts in deployment. We were scared. And let me show you how deployment works, okay? You know what? Some of you, non-tournament players, maybe this is your first real game. You might not know how, what a chess clock is for, what it does. Allow me to take a step back. A chess clock is there for you to know that neither player is slow playing. Slow playing uh, can have two meanings. There is the intentional act of slow play, where you believe that your team uh, cannot win if you go to uh, the final round, turn four, when it comes to Kill Team, of a, of a game. So you deliberately delay so that you will not count the fourth round score and you will win based on your points on the third round. Maybe you think you're going to break on the fourth round and so you're like, I can't get to there. So suddenly, instead of making a move like this, you say, oh, oh, I don't know, what should I do? Oh, how far can they move? Let me check my book. Oh, it's six inches. Ooh. That is the intentional act of slow play. Then there is the unintentional act of playing slowly. Very different. However, whilst it's not a malicious act, can be just as damaging to the final score. Uh, again, same thing. A game is supposed to be four rounds. If for some reason you do not finish and you only go to three rounds, the actual outcome of that game, one could argue, is debatable. Perhaps whoever won in round three would not have won in round four. That's what I'm saying. And if you don't have an actual way of keeping track of this, then that's really difficult to say, oh, this guy was playing slowly and I feel that I am deserved more points because they are, you know, they were playing slowly. As a judge coming over, you haven't watched that entire game, you don't know. But with the introduction of a chess clock, my gosh, you know exactly how long people have taken. You know which of them is slow playing 
and you know exactly what to do. So, the way a chess clock works is very simple, in fact. When you are doing anything in the game, it's your time. As soon as you have finished doing your action, you press there, and it goes to the opponent. Now, there are going to be a few questions you're going to have. You're going to be sat there thinking, oh, so do, in 40k, I get it, because you just alternate huge half hour long turns, hour long turns. But in Kill Team, you alternate activations. So how does that work? I mean, if I decide to fire Overwatch, that's their charge. Does it happen on their time? Well, no. Allow me to show you how that works right now. Yes, that's right. We're getting into examples. The first thing you're going to do in a game of Kill Team is deploy. Oh, you know what? I've gone, I've, I've gone too far. I've gone too far. Let me show you what we do. We need two dice. As soon as both of you roll your dice to see who goes first, you have now rolled for strategic advantage, which means that one of you has lost the strategic advantage and so will pick which side they will deploy on and which model they will place first. As soon as that is rolled, whoever won the roll presses this, which starts the time. At that point, as soon as this roll is decided and the winner has pressed this, time begins. You are not allowed to pause the chess clock. Let's be clear on that. The only person allowed to pause the chess clock for any reason should be the judge. This includes if you have rules queries, this includes if you call a judge over for arbitration, the clock goes on. Now, as soon as you've pressed the, pressed the, the start button, you then have to deploy. You as soon as you place your first model, you hit. It goes to the other player. As soon as they place their first model, they hit it back, and so on and so forth. Now, in your first time using this, using a chess clock, do not get uh, flustered. That's all I'm going to say, okay? This deployment with the really fast back and forth is kind of scary. And you think that this momentum, this pace of back and forth is going to keep it up through the entire game, it's not. It's a little bit nerve wracking as soon as you get to the deployment because you're getting that clock put back to you immediately, within two, maybe three seconds. Take a deep breath, it's your first time using a chess clock, don't worry, by the time you've gotten to the end of it, you will realize that actually you had a solid five, 10 minutes to deploy if that's what you needed. So, you're deploying. It's going back and forth really fast as both of you place up to 20 models very quickly. This is kind of fun, I need to stop doing that. Now, as the person that deploys the last model, you know that you have finished deploying. At which point, what's the next step? Well, it's a veteran move, isn't it? If you have a veteran move, you make your veteran move, Otherwise, you flip it over and you say, do you have a veteran move? They say, no, they flick it back to you. At which point, you roll your dice because that, sirs, is initiative. You flick it straight to them. Once they've rolled their dice, you then look at the dice pool. Who has initiative? If you have initiative, they flick the clock to you. If they have initiative, it stays on them. And then they have their whole movement. Honestly, that's the most crazy and frantic a chess clock ever gets. That deployment. Once you've figured out that that isn't actually as scary and time restricted as it initially seems, you're going to do just fine. However, there are other an, 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 some other issues that you might come up to. I would recommend that you get in the habit of touching this clock every time you finish doing something. Allow me to give you two examples here. Uh, what, what have we got on the board? We've got this guy here. It's going to charge this guy here. I declare as a Grey Knight, hey, uh, I'm going to charge your flayed one. Hit the clock. Would you like to react? No. They hit it straight back. 
that's fine. And you may say, well, why did I need to hit the clock over to them? Because allow me to show you the second way that goes. Hey, I'm a Grey Knight. I'm going to charge your flayed one. Would you like to react? Oh, um, mm, oh, uh, oof. let me, I can move, how far can I fall back? Is, is it three? Is it three? Do we need to, oh, yeah, I think it's three. Okay, uh, oh, can I overwatch? No, I don't have any guns. Um, no, I'm not going to react. You don't want that time on your clock. Let's be honest. Now, I may have been overacting that a smidge, but that is a le very legitimate way that some people play, and there's nothing wrong with that, as long as it happens on their time. Now, let's also go through something that, again, might seem a little bit petty, if, if you want to view it that way, but that's an armor save. My guy here, four storm bolter shots. He rolls to hit. Nice. I'm not even going to look, it doesn't matter. I hit three times. I roll to wound. Whatever. Hey, mate. Two wounds. Flick to them. Once your dice are out of that tray, it's flick to them. They roll their armor save. Whatever. Back to you. For whatever reason, whether it's because it went through and now it's an injury roll, or because it didn't and now it's back to your charges, doesn't matter. Either way, it goes back to you. Now, what did we save there? We, we flipped it over to them for two seconds. Now, let's see the other way that goes. Hey, mate, you need to make two saves. Flick it to them. Wait, who did you? Oh, um. Oh, wait, they're fla flayed ones. Uh, they're, they're three up saves. They're three up saves, just like the immortals. Flayed ones? Aren't they fours? Are they? Um... Oh no, you're right, they're fours. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're fours. Okay, oh, I didn't make any. Back to you. Dice cleared, back to you. Right? Now again, there's nothing wrong with temporarily forgetting the save of your, of your model. That happens, no big deal. But make sure it happens in your time. Okay, now I've got one more example for you, and this is actually just a little, a little bit of help for those with um, procedure. This isn't who should have the, uh, you know, the chess clock on them. This is something that a lot of people just don't know about. Picture this, lads. You get to the end of the round. It's the morale phase. You need to score up. Surely you pause the clock, because that's nobody's time. Boys, what did I say just five minutes earlier? You never pause the chess clock unless you're a judge. Now, before using a chess clock, I don't know about you, but I have always just, you know, it all just kind of runs together. Oh, yeah, I scored this. Oh, did you? Oh, we forgot morale. We should do morale first. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, yeah. Oh, I broke. Oh. Great. However, where's that chess clock going? You don't want that on your time. There is actually a clearly defined phase in which this happens. At the end of the fight phase, you continue in initiative order. You finish your fight, you flip it over to them. Boom. It is now your morale phase. They roll their break check. They then roll their nerve checks. Back to you. You do your break. You do your nerves. Back to them. They do their score. They count up their primaries. They count up their secondaries. They then flick it back to you. You count up your primaries, you count up your secondaries. As soon as you've done that, dice in the tray, back to them, dice in the tray. Who won initiative? Was it them? They keep the time. Was it you? They flick it back to you. Movement, simple. That one uh, might catch you out the first time you do it, because let's be honest, a lot of people they just get a bit messy at that point. Okay, let's talk judges. Let's talk calling somebody over in a tournament setting and asking a question. Whose time does that go on? Well, it's pretty simple. That goes on the time of whoever is asking the question. Now, 
you may think, hold on now, the person asking the question, if I were to ask it, would be having a genuine rules query and they believe that their opponent is in the wrong and that they are in the right. And therefore, surely, because their opponent is in the wrong, it should be on their time because they're the one in the wrong. That's a lovely idea, but let's think of it the other way. Let's think of you on the top tables of the LGT. I'll see you there, lads. I'll see you there. Top tables of the LGT. You know, 100 players, all playing kill team. And of course you're playing to win and so is your opponent because you're on the top damn tables. What do you do? Well, that's pretty simple. You slow play. And a great way of slow playing, if you're not playing the judge rules in the way that I just said, is to call the judge every time you can. For example, line of sight. Oh, can this model see this? Oh, um, yeah, I mean, definitely. It's like, oh, no, I, I don't think he can. I don't think he can. Let's get a judge over. Now, you know, they're only, what, they're wasting 10 seconds? If a judge isn't there, it could be a minute. That's a lot of time if they are intentionally slow play. And if they're doing that on every interaction, right? The person asking the question, you know, calling the judge over, it's on their time which if you're the honest player against the thieving cheatery that is top tables, I'm afraid that's going to be your time. However, that is of course where a judge should step in. If significant amount of, amounts of time is kind of being depleted by constant question querying, the judge should be there say, okay, you know, there, there are rules in place. This is all written down, by the way, I'm not making this up. Uh, there, there are rules in place for the judge to warn the person that continually um, is in the wrong. So it's not the person that continually asks the question. So if, if you are asking lots of questions and you're always right, then the judge should warn the other person and say, um, you're wrong about everything. What? At which point, of course, in reality, a judge will just stand by your table and make sure that no shenanigans are happening and effectively tell you both how to play the, the game. Uh, but if for whatever reason that's not possible, the other alternative is a judge is allowed to add time to your uh, chess clock. So, you know, if for whatever reason your opponent has wasted like five minutes of your time because you've had to ask so many questions and, and queries, no problem. Your judge can just add five minutes to your clock. Now, that really is a last resort because, of course, as soon as you add time to a chess clock, everybody's chess clocks, essentially, I mean, obviously everybody else is still going to finish when their chess clock says, but you, as somebody with a chess clock, is going to go an extra five minutes than everybody else. When, of course, the reason you have a chess clock is to limit everybody's time. And so if a single table officially, because a judge gives it to you, goes over that time, you have to honor that time. So they really don't want to do that, but it is an option. Anyway, wrapping everything up now, I just really want to double down on the fact that I really enjoy playing with a chess clock. It was stressful, but you know what? I know the rules of the game pretty well at this point. Unless you've just watched me on stream the last few days and pointed out some of my rules incorrections, then let's, let's keep that hush, hush. Okay, thank you. But I know the rules pretty well. I know the rules of the pack pretty well. I know the rules of the game, the core game pretty well. Putting everything in a timer was fun. Not even because it, it, it added another element to the game, but when I'm practicing, when I'm playing with people, I don't pay attention to the time. A single game might last two, two and a half hours because I'm not paying attention. However, once you put that chess clock into play, you know that whatever happens, that game's going to take you an hour, 60 minutes, 75, 90. Who knows, whatever you set. But it actually makes you focus, makes you really pay attention to what you're doing. And I think that's a good thing. I enjoyed myself and so did my opponent. We both went away agreeing that chess clocks are a positive to casual play. Crazy, I know. Anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I'd love to hear your comments about chess clocks. I know a lot of people don't think they're a good thing. And I'm going to say it, I think those people are wrong. Anyway, catch you soon, guys. Glass Half Dead, out.
Wait, that's not what I normally say. What do I say? Um, I hope you've had a good day, and I hope you continue to have a good day. That's such a lame sign-off. Oh, it's New Year's. Happy New Year's.